Bible with you this morning, I'd ask that you turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 to 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. so fond and affection for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you had become very dear to us. Mm -hmm. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The tag on this particular text is what we've been continuing in since end of last month, and that is entrusted with the gospel part three. Entrusted with the gospel part three. And beloved, when we observe our nation today, what we are witnessing is a clash of worldviews. Mm -hmm. And a worldview is simply the lens by which we view the world. There is a Christian worldview. Right. And there are non Christian, what I would call cultural worldviews. Mm -hmm. And in our nation today, if we're paying close attention, we can see this clashing of worldviews between the Christian worldview regarding how justice is brought about and the non-Christian or cultural worldview about how the justice is brought about. Right. And beloved, if we are not careful, we can be beguiled or fooled into believing that we are following a Christian worldview, but in reality, we're merely just following the world view of the culture. It could be merely just following what the culture believes about how justice is obtained. We can be fooled into thinking that we're being nonconformist. But in reality, all we are being is conformist with the culture. So as Christians, we've been entrusted with the, the gospel. We've been called to be witnesses as to how the transformative message of the gospel brings about true, lasting, and eternal justice. Yes. Right. Sir. We have been called, beloved, to be salt and light in this world. Uh -huh. As salt, we preserve the world through our faithful witness as this world around us is uh, decaying. The world is not getting better. The world is decaying. Mm -hmm. And it's like we shine the light of the gospel message into the darkness that this world, our nation, is presently in. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, how do we as Christians make an impact for justice in a world that is decaying and in darkness? Mm -hmm. And so the challenge for Christians today, Christians as we have been entrusted with the gospel is to balance our call to live in the world but not be of Amen. the world. Amen. Come on. We've been sent into the world not to fight for this world because this world is not our home. Amen. We've been sent into the world, beloved, to advance the kingdom 
kingdom by spreading the gospel and preaching Christ crucified. We've been sent into the world to exalt the message of the cross, which is foolishness to the world because the world is perishing. Well, the world views our message as stupid. The mm. world views the message of the cross as moronic. And even though the world views our message as stupid and our, our message as moronic, we don't flee from the decadence in our culture. Mm -hmm. We don't flee from the darkness that is in our culture. We've been freed from the decadence that is in our culture. We've been freed from the darkness that is in our culture. We've been brought out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes, sir. So we don't flee from the marketplace of ideas. The marketplace with the truth of the gospel mm -hmm. because it is the gospel that we have been entrusted with. And so when we come to our text on this Lord's Day, we encounter a church. And what I believe is a, is a model church of what it looks like to be entrusted with the gospel, a church that is faithfully living out what God would have us to do amidst the culture that does not view our message as valid. Come on. A world in which Caesar was running things. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Caesar believed himself to be God and he yeah. wanted himself to be worshipped as a God. Mm -hmm. And this same Caesar would persecute and kill Christians just for the sport and amusement of it. Of it. And beloved, we need to understand today well, that this world don't love you. Amen. You will find that this world does not love you and it does not love your Jesus. Amen. It does not love Jesus as the Savior of the world. So you can waste your time if you want to, marching and protesting and throwing up your fist. But this world does not love you or the message that you represent. Amen. And don't forget that. And so Amen. as the church, we've got to remain faithful. Well, just as the saints at Thessalonica were doing during these uncertain times. This church remained faithful. They remained faithful in the face of persecution. They remained faithful and they demonstrated what it looked like to be a witness in a city in which they resided that did not love their message. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there were some Christians, some saints that were persecuted personally. They drug them out of the house. One individual by the name of Jason was taken before the magistrates because uh, they were proclaiming Jesus as a God who was uh, above Caesar. Mm -hmm. And so when the word started spreading around town. There was a mob that had arisen that eventually ran Paul, Silas, and Timothy out of town. Yet this church remained faithful. They remained a model of what it looks like to be entrusted with the gospel. And beloved, I suspect the reason they Remain the model of what it looks like to be entrusted with the gospel is because of the leadership that they had in Paul, Silas, and Timothy. They had a team leadership approach mm -hmm. to this church at Thessalonica. And what the church needs so desperately today is biblical leadership. Yes, sir. Amen. And the reason why I believe the church so desperately needs biblical leadership is because people rarely rise above those who faithfully lead them. Mm -hmm. See, once a person is fully trained, they'll be just like their teacher. And so Paul, Silas, 
and Timothy faithfully demonstrated what godly biblical leadership looks like in difficult times, well, right. in times of crisis. And this was reflective in the church. They reflected the leadership that they received in this particular church because they began to model that leadership mm -hmm. in the city in which that church resided. And like the contemporary church, and like, well, rather like the Thessalonian church, the contemporary church desperately needs to be leading the mm -hmm. way. Come on. Leading the way and showing the culture that is around us what it looks like to be a redeemed people. Well. Yeah. In difficult times, yeah. showing the culture what it looks like to re reproduce disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ in difficult times. Because we haven't been called to be anarchists. Right. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't been called to be anarchists. We've been called to make disciples. Right. We have not been called to leave.